As some of you may know, I'm a huge Spyro fan. It's one of my favorite childhood games, and finally seeing the first three remastered and fit with new controls, a better frame rate resolution, and infinitely superior visuals has me excited. My cold, dead, lifeless heart is beating for something. But of course, the game has already had its controversies. It was originally going to be released with only the first game on the disc, and you'd have to download the other two games in a free update when you installed it. Luckily, the dev team went to Activision and convinced them to delay the game so all three games could be on the same disc, which is definitely a good sign. But aside from that, there has been an ongoing controversy surrounding some of the aesthetic choices made by Toys for Bob. Obviously, the new team was going to take some creative liberties when remastering the games. They were all old PS1 titles where the technology back then couldn't possibly support all the things they can do now. So with the added details to the environment and basic characters, we also got a couple redesigns, most notably being Sheila the Kangaroo and Alora the Fawn. Artistic choices are pretty subjective, so I'm not going to argue which is better. Personally, I don't see how anyone could think this design looks better than this. At this point, I think your nostalgia goggles are not only glued to your face, but have permanently impaired your vision. But in regards to Alora, I've seen a lot of positivity surrounding her. Sure, there's some negativity, but for the most part, everyone's loving her new design and- Oh, what the fuck? But probably one of the most controversial of the new redesigns is that of Sheila. People really don't like this new redesign. Personally, there's only two things I don't like, the hairstyle and the fact that it's being shown on a console. Because goddamn, if they would have just released this on the PC, all of this would look so much better. But I digress, the game still looks pretty good, so long as you don't zoom in. And a lot of people, and by people I mean SJ W's take serious umbrage with Sheila being over-sexualized. Now, maybe I'm just retarded, but I'm struggling to figure out what the hell is even remotely sexualized about this character. She has hair now and pronounced eyelashes, and that's literally it. The best arguments I've seen, and I say arguments very loosely, is that they slapped a bunch of feminine traits onto Sheila when they didn't really need to be there. Which, sure, it wasn't a requirement, but given that the devs gave more personality to every character in the game, I don't know how this is somehow a problem, yet giving a dragon painting tools isn't. The other argument I've heard is that it's a generic design compared to the original. I don't know how anything could possibly be more generic than literally just a regular-ass kangaroo, but okay, sure, generic. Got it. Now that's really just the precursor to this entire conversation. Personally, I don't really take much issue with Sheila's design aside from the low-res hair, which looks like some awkward red wig made out of cabbage. The actual issue is what I've seen a few SJWs making out of it. Not long after this controversy started, I saw a post on Twitter calling for what is the most ridiculous set of bullshit I've ever seen. And just in case you call into question if this person is actually an SJW or not, when someone made the joke that this was a challenge to draw traps, they replied with, that's so transphobic. You can tell the priorities here are just fucking great. The person issued an art challenge to draw a female version of anything, but they can't have breasts, hair, or dress to differentiate it, saying he's calling out every female design ever. Evidently, he wants you to only convey this character through body language and personality, which apparently all male characters use, but female characters don't. That is... So flawed. Okay, let's look at Luke Skywalker. What are some pieces that make up who he is as a person? He's intensely loyal to his friends, he cares deeply for his family to the point that he put his life at risk to turn the second most evil person in the galaxy back to a good guy, just based on the fact that he's Luke's father, and he's adventurous at heart. Nothing about Luke's physical appearance or the clothes he wears indicates any of that. You'd actually have to see him doing shit in order to understand any of that. His clothes don't tell you that, his body structure doesn't tell you that, he is a character tell you that. Through interacting with other people and how he acts in certain situations, you can glean what kind of person he is. He isn't defined by the fact that he's a man, he's defined by what's inside. SJWs like this, on the other hand, seem to conflate personality with appearance. To them, this redesign of Sheila or anything like it trivializes her as a character. Which, first off, I don't see how the hell that's the case. It's not like they put her in high heels, gave her obnoxious lipstick, and gave her enormous pendulous tits. They gave her a fucking Steve Irwin shirt, eyelashes, and hair. That's literally it. Now, if they put her in a Bayonetta costume, that would be one thing. Not that I have any issue with Bayonetta, I actually like her as a character. But if they kept Sheila's personality the same while totally altering her appearance and making her some back alley slut, then there would be a legitimate thing to complain about. Instead, it's just the fact that there's any femininity to speak of that makes the SJWs get their panties in a bunch over this. I hate this idea that SJWs keep purporting that femininity is synonymous with weakness or sexualization. It seems to me that SJWs are the ones that over-sexualize 
idolize characters and people because they're attracted to them, and then they try projecting their insecurities onto other people as though the thing they're feeling is bad. But they don't seem to understand the fact that femininity and strength aren't mutually exclusive. This whole draw a female character with no indication whatsoever that it's a female character thing is honestly kind of degrading in my eyes. For all the SJWs talk on pride, they don't really seem to take any pride in femininity whatsoever. It's part of what humanizes female characters and makes them more relatable and realistic. I know I always use her as an example, but it's because she's seriously fucking the best thing ever. But Ripley from the Alien franchise is a superb example of this. I don't think anyone can possibly deny her strength as a character. She not only constantly battles against forces well beyond her, but shows the weaknesses that naturally accompany a human being. She'll go down into an alien hive with a makeshift flamethrower and pulse rifle and square off against the Xenomorph Queen, the most formidable and dangerous life form in the universe. But she also has the motherly nature that helps her build a strong bond with Newt. It not only helps fuel her motivations, but through the nurturing bond she shares with characters like Newt, or her instinct to help people and do what she thinks is the best to keep people alive and safe, she perseveres and evolves into the strong female character we all know and love. Get away from her, you bitch! What's honestly kind of insulting is how female characters are portrayed nowadays and how SJWs treat certain characters that don't abide by their own unrealistic and frankly absurd standards. Like, look at Sarah Palmer from Halo, one of the worst fucking female characters I've ever seen. There's nothing human or relatable about her. She's a blank slate. But because she has armor that isn't sexualized, she's perceived as strong. And posts like this go to show the absolute misconception of how characters are, and furthermore should be, written. According to this person, body language and personality are what make up male characters, and it's either never about their looks or rarely ever about it. First off, we really need to stop pretending like this is even true when pertaining to male characters. It not only completely ignores the fact that there are plenty of terrible male characters in literature, gaming, movies, you name it, but also ignores the issues with male characters that are pertinent to the conversation. You would be simply dishonest to deny that men are, by and large, typically represented as hyper-attractive, super-athletic, immediately courageous and powerful, or in some cases, a giant hunk of muscle and badassery. There are also plenty of male characters that fit all of the criteria who have next to no personality. Look, I love Halo, but Master Chief is a blank slate, and crazy as it sounds, even despite how bad the game was, I actually appreciated Halo 4 for trying to make him more of a sympathetic human character. What a lot of female characters nowadays seem to forget is that you need to actually have, you know, an actual character to go off of. People liked Halo 1 to 3 Master Chief not because he was a relatable person, but because you were put into his shoes and you, the player, personally became the Master Chief. Social justice writers seem to think that because people like huge badass tanks that don't do shit, then that must mean that they should write all of their female characters that exact same way. And to be fair, some characters like Samus can work that way. Now, full disclosure, I haven't played most of the Metroid games, so I'm going off of like the super early iterations of this character, which is to say that there is no character. But old Samus was pretty akin to old Master Chief, being that it was just a faceless person in a suit of armor. Even if you weren't necessarily the same gender, you just took on that role. The problem is that a lot of female characters are written as though they're supposed to reflect that level of badassery while simultaneously being a relatable character, which of course is entirely possible, but it seems that it's never done well. Feminists like to live in their little echo chambers where they think a character that's just an absolute cunt is somehow akin to something the player, viewer, or reader can relate to. The problem here is that SJWs perceive women with relatable or sympathetic personalities as inherently weak, but that's not true at all. I rather like seeing characters when they're vulnerable and have some great feat to overcome. If Frodo had the same personality as Sarah Palmer, I wouldn't give a shit about the Lord of the Rings. Like, imagine if that argument he had with Sam when they were climbing up to Kirith Ungol was representative of everything Frodo ever said or did. He would be the shittiest character ever, totally unrelatable or likable in any way. I liked seeing Master Chief have to struggle to come to terms with the death of the only friend who ever really understood him as a person. Johnson and the Arbiter are great and all, but they didn't have the personal insight that Cortana would have, given that she, you know, was constantly in his head for years on end. I liked seeing Nathan Drake have to struggle between his loyalty to his wife, his loyalty to his brother, and his desire to go out and have adventures like he used to. I like watching Aaron failing time and time again, but never giving up on his struggle to create a better world and ultimately harnessing incredible power. It's almost like the best characters you find are generally the ones with relatable character flaws and motivations, not just total cunts that treat everyone like they're lesser. The same logic, or rather lack thereof, that SJWs apply to character traits has similarly been applied here with character appearance. For some bizarre reason, apparently having a female character that looks female is bad to them. If I had to 
guess. I think it is, as I said earlier, because they conflate appearance with personality. That's why people like Anita Sarkeesian pass on Bayonetta as though she's just tits and ass. Which, granted, her sexuality does play a role in her actual personality, but, and I can't believe I have to be the one to say this, maybe someone's body doesn't define who they are as a person? Crazy, I thought the SJWs were the ones who were supposed to be all about breaking down the barriers of sexuality and shit. Their line of thought goes directly to, if this character has female characteristics, then it must be sexualized. I don't know, man, if you look at this image and thought it was sexy, then I think that says a lot more about you than it does about the artist. I'm the furry in this situation, and I have to be the one to tell you not to sexualize an anthropomorphic character. Oh, how the times have changed. But what this ultimately comes down to is SJWs conflating physical feminine characteristics with weakness, which if anything sounds more offensive coming from them than it does from the people defending the design choice. Is it really taboo to make a character look either attractive or just feminine or masculine whatsoever? You do know that you can be an attractive female and still be a strong character, right? Like, case in point, I really like Yennefer from the Witcher series. I think she's an awesome character and she's also hot as shit. But her looks don't define her as a person. In fact, in the books, there's a moment where Geralt discovers that she was born a hunchback. She was abused by her parents and because of her upbringing, unintentionally creates toxic environments between herself and someone she's in a relationship with. She used magic to make herself more attractive and is intentionally standoffish and cold in order to mask her own insecurities. Her looks have nothing to do with who she is as a person. She's definitely attractive, but that has no bearing on her personality. To reduce a female character like Yennefer down to her looks, you'd be completely ignoring all the valuable substance to her as a character. She's fiercely protective of the ones she cares about to the point that she'll break down moral boundaries in order to find and defend her adoptive daughter, Ciri. Though she's very dry and borderline humorless, she also is incredibly loving towards those who are important to her. She's come to the rescue of Dandelion, Geralt's friend who she's had plenty of reasons to detest just because he's important to the ones she loves. She works tirelessly to achieve the things she cares about in life and nearly abandoned everything for the betterment of her future and the future of others. I think she's actually very underappreciated by some Witcher fans who see her only in the black and white of she's mean. She's actually a far more complex and sympathetic character than most give her credit for. Yes, you can have an attractive female character with actual depth and intrigue, just like you can have a faceless man in a suit be sympathetic and relatable. Ultimately, what it comes down to is execution, but I have yet to see one single example of an SJW executing their ideas in a way that isn't outwardly dry. Dreadful. The person who made this post is going about this in the exact wrong way. You don't need to strip away what makes a woman a woman in order for them to be strong and independent. I don't know about the rest of you, but I want to see a female character actually be, well, a female character. Once you make said female character into a male character, all believability and relatability is stripped away. Every time Sarah Palmer is on screen, I just groan in contempt because she's terrible. She's a total bitch and offers nothing of value aside from cringeworthy monologue and self-righteous bullshit about how she's a whammon and she's just as good as the other boys. You can make male characters have moments of weakness or doubt without stripping away the masculinity, just like you can give female characters moments of weakness or doubt without stripping away what makes them strong characters. Once you rip out what makes them definitively male or female, you take out what makes them human. Similarly, if you take away all the physical male attributes from a man or all the physical female attributes from a woman, the believability starts to vanish. This obviously isn't the case in every situation, it again relies on context and execution, but shaming artists for making a female character look female or a male character look male doesn't get you anywhere. It just denies the unfalsifiable fact that there are actual differences between males and females in every species ever. Obviously, changes were gonna be made with the new Spyro game. Sheila on the PS1 was practically a nightmare to look at because she's just a collection of unnerving looking blocks. Remember the sunny villa in Year of the Dragon? You do realize those little characters were lions, not bears, right? If it weren't for the long tail, there would be nothing differentiating the two, so the devs tweaked the design to make them actually look like the species they're supposed to be. And as I mentioned before, pretty much every character in the game has had some sort of redesign, be it minor tweaks to Spyro to update him to keep him looking as close to the original as possible, or giving the dragons he saves in the first game a variety of different articles of clothing or body types to better show who they are as people, be it from a personality standpoint or to show what their interests are. The outrage against something as simple as giving Sheila more more feminine features and extremely moderate feminine features at that is just a part of the greater outrage machine against femininity in general that's helping to pollute good female characters across the board. And just as a disclaimer, I'm not saying all of the people complaining about her design are like this. I was specifically going after the few SJWs I've seen complain about it and the person who made the whole make a 
female character with no indication that it's a female character. Again, I'm not gonna bother arguing something subjective because I don't really care. Just thought I'd bring that up since I'm about a thousand percent certain someone was gonna take this video the exact wrong way. Demonizing female traits, be it purely aesthetic or through personality, only works to deconstruct what can make many female characters not only memorable, but great.